my name is Ekta Patel, and for those of you who don't know me, I am Ilri's Bioscience Communications Manager. Um, I consider myself to be a unique species, and um, how so? Because I come from an Indian background. And if you know many Indians in East Africa, then you know that most Indians go into businesses. And unlike my family, I decided to pursue my passion in molecular and cellular biology and genetics and became a scientist. So for nearly 10 years, I've been working in the lab. And um, like many of you here today, I understand that feeling and excitement of taking your gel um, to check if there was a band or if your negative and positive controls are the way they're supposed to be and there's no contamination. And my favorite moment was when we were making some bacterial mutants um, and knocking genes out, I couldn't sleep the entire night because I couldn't wait to get into the lab the next day just to check if my transfections had worked. So that's me and many, many years passed that way um, until one day, my supervisor, who many of you may know, Phil Toy, who my former supervisor, said to me that we're going into the field this time. And uh, we're taking the vaccine that we made at Ilri. We made a vaccine for the cattle disease known as East Coast Fever. And we we're going to take this vaccine and go into the field um, and see how it works. And the prospect of him even suggesting that we needed to go to the field, and I thought, well, what is a molecular biologist going to do in the field? Uh, I had convinced myself that I belong with my pipettes in the lab where I make magic happen. I was not excited. And I don't know if he knows that. Um, but I said, okay, I'm going to be positive and I'm going to go because this is not when you put up a fight. And I'll tell you something, it pretty much changed a lot of things. So what happened is we decided to take a four and a half hour drive to Tanzania and stayed in the town of Arusha. And early the next morning, uh, we got up and we went and drove another hour into a Maasai village in the town of Monduli. Um, the plains were bare and vast and it was a cold morning. And in the distance, uh, where they were, the Maasai were staying, uh, you could see them coming out in their sort of traditional mud huts with their traditional garments also looking very cold. And as you get closer to these, uh, the Maasai community, what happens is anyone that's so hospitable says, hey, come in, you know, have a seat, but you sit on stones. And so we sort of made ourselves comfortable. And then something interesting happens. So when you go to someone's house, they make an offering. And they said, we're going to give you some special Maasai tea. And I see this Maasai lady pouring out special Maasai tea in our cups from a gourd. And I'm completely freaking out at this point because must I drink milk with blood? And I thought, am I, is, this, is this what it's coming down to? Like, you know, and I'm looking at Phil and I'm looking at the other vets and the colleagues. And then they take a sip of this tea and I look at them and I see no one's sort of passing out or dying. <laughs> you know, it doesn't look like tea, it doesn't smell like tea. But you know, I force myself to take a gulp. And then, I'll be very honest with you, I was still looking at a way to like, you know, disposing the rest of it. Fortunately for me, uh, you know, the specks of sun were coming through and um, the cattle were gathering near the Bomas and the, Maasai, the, the rest of the Maasai were coming through. So I got excited and I thought, you know what, I'm going to be done before I know it. And we started walking closer to the Bomas. And as we were getting closer to the Bomas, I noticed something. I noticed the smell of damp soil mixed with sort of cattle feces. And I was also accosted by flies, so many flies. And I, the, they, the flies would sit on my pen and they would sit on my chart sheet. And you know, I was just sort of waving my hand around trying to make sure the flies didn't sit on me. And I see the women and the children playing around and they've got flies all over them. So a uh, little baby and the baby's face and nose was all covered with flies. There's nothing I could do about it, and they didn't seem too bothered by this. Nevertheless, our, our task of our, our, our field travel is coming to an end, and um, the Maasai men decided that they are going to honor us and celebrate this by um, letting us eat with them. 
and generally they don't allow the women to sit with the men. So we all gathered around a tree and, and, and sat in a circle and um, the translator there said to us that, you know, traditionally they don't allow the women to sit, but we're so grateful for the vaccine that you've brought to our village and we want to show our appreciation. And the next thing we know is that this young Maasai man comes and stabs the earth with, the, with, with a cooked piece of roast meat from some animal that I don't even know. And, and we're all supposed to eat. And, 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 I, and I said, oh my God, my thoughts were running away with me. And I thought, I didn't want anything. I, 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 don't get me wrong, I, I appreciate the hospitality. I'm grateful, but really, I didn't want any of it. And the translator asked me that, you know, what's with, why are you so reluctant? And I didn't know how to explain that I was out of my comfort zone. And would you believe it, that that wasn't the end of the trip. I ended up going back there a couple of more times. This time, I took some non-toxic fly traps with me because I had them sitting around, you know, Indian people do business, and so we had some that we were sourcing from somewhere. And I decided to take these fly traps to this community. And they worked like magic. Um, they were so happy, and somehow I earned the name Miss Chana Inzi. And every time I'd go back to Monduli, they just call me Miss Chana Inzi, which means fly girl or the fly girl, yes. <laughs> so having found a solution to one of their problems, the Maasai lady decided to take me into her, her, her hut. And, you know, I bent down uh, to get into the doorway. And um, I was, it was dark, and it smelled like junk. And she wanted to show me where the, the family slept. So they slept on a bed made out of um, cow dung, which was at the height of, of, of a normal bed. And they put, a, uh, they put a sheet there. And I didn't know what she was showing me this, but she said, something's biting their head. And if I could find a solution for that. And I'm so ashamed to say this to you, all of you, but I just couldn't wait to get out of there. I mean, was it lice? Was it mites? Was it ticks? You know, what have you got in my head? So I, I just wanted to get out. The point is, I did not help this Maasai woman. And that was probably the last time I ended up back in Monduli. But I felt completely inadequate in that environment. And I went away taking a hard look at something. I looked at all of my sort of uh, inflexibilities and the hang-ups that I have. And I paired it with all of my textbook knowledge of, of, of being a microbiologist and a molecular geneticist and whatever else. And then I looked at sort of the needs of the pastoralist communities, and I couldn't help but ask the question, then how is I, as a scientist, going to make a difference to the people and their livestock if I wasn't willing to make the change myself? So I understood that I needed to change the way I understand things first. So most of you are going to say that now, um, as I serve Ilri as a communication manager, um, I'm helping to um, influence decision makers. But that's not the way that I see it. I strongly believe that my main job is to, inf my main job is to, and the critical success factor that I contribute towards is getting the science right. Because without the communications, we cannot get the science right. So for those of us who are fortunate enough to spend part or most of our life on the African continent, we need to understand the harshness as well as the rich resources that this continent offers to us. And having said that, I look forward to working with all the scientists and all the non-scientists to make a difference and fulfill um, all the research that we serve uh, to get our science right. And these days, I look forward to drinking more of that special Maasai tea. Thank you very much.